Elizabeth Smith is Josh Badnack, CEO of DentalPlans.com. Well, I was just on your website. I know you were, ma'am. And I got to tell you what, I'm going to give you that dental plan for free today if you could take 15 minutes of your time and just talk to me. I'm here with my entire senior management team. Uh, uh, okay, sure. <laughs> Save her on her ten bucks, you know. In that 15 and 20 minutes, and we did this for like two hours, in that two hours, we learned more about our company and what to do to make it better than any other exercise that we did in years. In years. So you'd say that uh, benchmarking is pretty important when you're, very, when you're very. trying to find the quality of your company. And, yeah. and, and, you, and usability, you know, remember, I'm talking Shared strictly so on the internet. Usability, when you talk about internet platforms, is extremely important. So I'm sure you guys shop online, right? It's also not face-to-face, -face, so it requires a lot more Correct. effort. Correct. And some people like that. So there's a lot of people that they don't want to talk to. Right. There's a lot of hermits out there that spend a lot of money that they don't want to talk to on the phone. They, they like that they can go on the internet and buy something and not talk to a salesperson and not be bothered. Um, but the usability part of it, from getting from, I mean, how many times have you guys gone on a website and purchased something and something goes slow and you're just like, forget it and you leave? A lot, probably. Also yeah. It looks sketchy. Yeah. Or, or just there's a lag or just something's not, you know. Or so, like you have to refresh the page and it didn't correct. work right or correct. whatever. So the number one thing for converting on the internet, and this is a trade secret, call it whatever you want. The number one thing that I've seen in my experience on converting on the internet, a visitor to sale, is speed. The number one thing. So if you're slow and your site's slow and there's latency, your conversion ratio is going to go from 1% to a quarter of a percent. You get it fast and it'll go. It's just, it, listen, you've only got maybe, maybe now I don't know what the numbers are, but when I started it was only 20% of the United States were, were comfortable putting your credit card on the internet. Right. Now you're maybe up to 70% or 65%. There's still 40% of the United States that are not even comfortable putting your credit card on the internet and buying something. So there's a long, like when I look at businesses now, and for all you guys that are looking at businesses, the internet is in its infancy. It's just started. I mean, if you look at how old it is and look at other bricks and mortar businesses, I mean, it's it's just, just, just started. So when you look to start a business, look at segments with high valuations is the first thing. Look for recurring revenue because that gives you multiple ticks. And when you start a business, the whole point of it is to sell it. And they're going to sell it by your EBITDA. So you guys know what your EBITDA is, right? Yes. So what your, your EBITDA profit is at the end, you're going to get a multiplier of that. So if you make $5 million at the end of the year, you want to go get a 20 multiple times that. You know, that's big numbers. I mean, 20 times 5 is, you know, 100 million bucks. So when you do a 10 multiple, it's 50 million bucks. But if you're selling, um, if you own an insurance agency or a gas station, they're going to pay you one and a half times your EBITDA. So when you look to develop a business or get into a business, look for those areas where there's Over really there, high valuations and, 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 and large multiple ticks because that's going to give you the most value when you go to exit. I have a question for you. Um, despite that you didn't have, um, that, you, that your company did not have a, a economic downturn, really, from the 2008 to present period of what the economy did in general, um, would you say that people, based on your, the customers that come to your site and whatnot, would you say that um, individuals have um, chosen to still engage more so in health related things, or, or did they have they declined to be involved in some of the things? Right now, people are holding on to the luxuries, you know. 
my suit at Macy's are going to tell you what it costs, right? Well, why can't you tell me what it's going to cost to fix my broken finger? There's 10 different doctors, and if you don't have insurance, it's a nightmare. <laughs> Even if you have insurance, yeah. you can't tell the insurance company. I know. You can find later on. It, it's true. I, I, in December, I, you know, I had a baby, so I had, I had a cesarean section. I switched insurances from, on December 1st. So my OBGYN had, you know, diff I had different insurance, and then everything was picked off the, you know, the, the right. deductible right. everything, right? Recording. December 1st, we go in, I have a surgery on the mind, okay? And they built the wrong insurance company, you know, because I've been in there for procedures during the the whole time, and now I got a $30,000 bill to go to C-section. And I'm like, what? I'm like, are you kidding? Like, but did you check this insurance? Oh, well, you use this doctor for this, and this was the anesthesi you know, anesthesiologist. Next thing you know, I've got 400 bills coming to my house mm -hmm. for, for work. I didn't even know I had done. Not yet. It's still working on it. And when I called the insurance company about, you know, uh, about the, the pain management meds that they give you during the C-section, they said, um, uh, well, you know, we, we won't accept the bill, you know, for this thing, but we'll accept it for that. So now any overage that you have that I paid extra now has to go towards that bill. I'm like, are you kidding me? It's really, it's really sad. It really is. It really is. It's a, the, the healthcare industry is a very difficult industry, not only to be in as an entrepreneur, but as a person, just in general, just trying to get regular care. I, I know that we pay over $2,000 a month in health insurance, including our dental, our vision, and sure. our regular coverage for a family of five. I mean, that's, that's a lot of money. The $2,000 a month is for a lot of people's salaries. Sure. Yeah, it's got three kids. <laughs> three kids, professor. Yeah, three kids. I'm thirty. I'm thirty-three. You know. But then I'll be really skinny and really hot by the time I'm forty. So I'll be the cougar at that time, right? <laughs> Get it all out of the way. All right. So who, who do we have next? We have a couple more, and then and we'll finish up. Everybody can grab something to eat. We'll keep Josh here only for a few minutes longer because I'm sure he wants to head back to Costa Rica. Um, so we have Sabina, you have a question? Yeah, I actually have two. Um, do you have any set goals for Operation Town? And the second one is, are you involved with any other philanthropic organizations? Um, Some uh, pretty amazing uh, people come 
uh, you know, do concerts like Free Six Mafia, Lily Khan, and things like that. And, you know, just the idea that, you know, once you've achieved that success for yourself, sure. that you can and that you want to take that sure. and give that back, whether it's advice or money. Like, even now, I mean, coming here and speaking for us, you know, there's no honorarium. It's just your, you know, kind of hanging out. Honestly, it's fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and that's giving back to us because all these students will learn and they'll take that advice and they'll use it for their future and their endeavors. And that will make them successful. Yeah, I get a little boss in my email to Josh, Josh Valley. Any ideas, questions, just shoot me an email. I mean, it's what I like to do, to be honest with you. I have the time to do Don't it. Don't go bargain, please. <laughs> <laughs> you know, run it through me first. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. I got an assistant who goes through all my emails and everything. That's true. Jim, she hung the way. What is it again? Josh at joshvabiac.com. I have to get rid of my Josh at Yeah, well, you get, I imagine you get some people. Well, it took it from you. Twenty days. 
founders and operating a service-based company versus developing the product like you, like you have with uh, Winslabs? Um, I mean, listen, customer service is tough. That's the first thing. You know, um, I, the first, the, the second I was able to, I actually hired my partner's daughter to handle customer service, and I shut my cell phone off. I mean, 800 number used to go to my cell phone, and um, I learned from the restaurant's patience, which I don't really have, um, but it's hard. Chicken Friday, we give her free chicken away. The next day, this woman walks back in and says, I didn't like the chicken. Flavors <laughs> <laughs> free. <laughs> so now, you actually drove in here to tell me you didn't like it. <laughs> you know, so there's a lot of nut jobs out there, there's a lot of crazy people out there. Um, so that, 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 that's really tough um, because a lot of companies now, the really good ones, they really focus on great customer. So you've got competition out there for, for businesses because that will keep a customer, I feel anyway, I would pay a little more for a product or a service if the customer service is great. So like I have USAA insurance because I have the Air Force. They have the best customer service for homeowners insurance, auto insurance, everything. And like I had to switch to Chartist because they don't do home insurance anymore. Well, what all these insurance companies now do say, well, if we want to do your home, we got to do your cars. Yeah. So, but it killed me to take my cars away from USAA because their customer service is impeccable. I mean, you call them and it's right away, 60 seconds, you're on the phone with them. You're not on a 20 minute, 30 minute wait. I'll give you another perfect example, which you guys may know, the iPhone. You know if you buy an iPhone from AT&T right now and you have a problem, you can't go into AT&T with your iPhone? You have to go to an Apple store? I mean, yeah. think about that. You spend 400 bucks, you buy an iPhone, it just happened to me. Two weeks later, it broke. I went into the AT&T store. I'm like, look, man, it broke. And I showed him. I thought, you your phone screwed. Give me a new one. No, you got to go to Galleria. I looked at the guy. I'm like, look, no offense, but an hour of my time, and probably two hours of my time, to go to Galleria, deal with the Apple store there, and come back, two hours of my time, I can buy 50 iPhones. I'm like, I don't have the time to do that. So I went back to Verizon, and sure enough, Verizon, you can go in, and they'll deal with your iPhone out right then and there. So I think that customer service is, is, is key. It was the hardest thing for me to deal with. Um, the networks themselves were a little bit difficult, but nothing like dealing with customer service. And on an operational standpoint also, uh, merchant services gave me a lot of problems for a couple of years. Taking credit cards over the internet and getting... They're horrible with their fees. They have those PCI fees and this it's and not, that. It's not it's the, a nightmare. It's not the fee. It's, it's getting the line of credit. So, like, I need a $30 million line of credit annually for my business right now, maybe $35 million. And a lot of these companies says, well, if you want a $35 million, we want to hold $5 million bucks of yours as a reserve. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Yeah. No problem. So, once I got through that, and, and I would say another thing is, when you look, if you're going to do any type of business online, you're going to have merchant services, make sure you pick up run an RFP process on who you're going to bank with. Because what we did is we ran an RFP process and we started, we switched over and now we're with Citibank. Well, Citibank has a relationship with First Data, which is the biggest credit card processor. So now all of our credit card processing issues went away because we're holding a million plus bucks from going to Citibank as a corporation. We're running $30 million through. So because of that relationship they had, it solved a really big issue for us. Your alliances are extremely important. Extremely important. Any networking alliances. And I, and I, I tell them that a lot. Like, it's not just whether you have a local business or you have a virtual business. Those alliances that you make, you continue that relationship yes. with people. That's really what's going to make your business flourish. And if your bricks and mortar and someone comes in and swipes a credit card, you have no issue. That's not a problem for you, merchant services. It's when there's no card present. Yeah. Where, 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 it's all online. Where, where you have a problem. Very challenging. Right. Awesome. First of all, thank you so much for answering so many questions uh, and hanging out with us for the last, you know, hours. Does anyone have any last questions or anything else for Josh before I can release him to the wild? Yeah, yeah. You don't mind? I said one really quick. Yeah, I noticed you're majoring in international studies. You major in international studies. I'm also majoring in international studies. <laughs> 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 I feel like I'm working for you. <laugh
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, give me a job. No, but sometimes it doesn't get the respect it deserves, or a lot of people say, you know, when you're so like, like, quite frankly, like, what the hell is that, or what do you do with that? Like, have you had any problems with that being your major, and, like, how did you overcome it? Well, I would rather have your major over anyone else in the regular degree. Any day of the week, dude. Any day of the week. Because, why is that a big Wholesale market in all those prescription drugs, so you can be able to wholesaler and then 